Today we're going to build and deploy a serverless API built using Cloudflare Workers, Hono, Drizzle ORM, and Neon. Let's see how we can do it. To get started, run npm create Cloudflare. This command will run the create Cloudflare CLI, which we'll use to set up a Cloudflare Workers project. So the first thing we need to do is specify in which directory do we want to create our application. So I'll call my directory API, and I want to create a hello world worker. I'd like to use TypeScript, and now we're installing the project's dependencies. Now that's done, I'd like to use Git for version control, and I don't want to deploy my app right now. I'll do this later. So now I can navigate into the new directory, so I can just do CD API, and I'll open it in VS Code. So this is the project that was set up. There are two main files here, the wrangler.toml, and this is a configuration file to customize the development and publishing setup for a Cloudflare worker. And the other important file is the index.ts file that's in the source directory. This file contains a basic Cloudflare worker. So first you'll notice that we're exporting an interface called env, and this enables auto-completion for your project's environment variables. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we're doing a default export of an async function called fetch. And this function takes three parameters, a request object, and which is our environment variables, and a context, which is the context that our function runs in. And as you can see, we're just returning new response and we're returning the string hello world. Now we can actually test this setup by doing npm run dev. This will start a local development server and we'll be able to see the result by going to localhost 8787. And as you can see, we get hello world. Now, while we can handle different HTTP methods by checking the request method, using a framework will make it much easier to build the API. And to do that, we'll use Hono, which is a web framework that is compatible with Cloudflare workers. So the first thing we need to do is install Hono. So I'll stop my development server. I'll click X to exit and now it's shutting down. And now I'll simply run npm install Hono. And now that's installed, let's actually remove all of this boilerplate code that we get by default. So the first thing we'll need to do is to import Hono from Hono. And we can do const app equals new Hono. Now to create an API endpoint, all we need to do is say app.get and pass in the path, and we want this to be at the index route. And then we'll pass in a function. And this function will return c.json. And yeah, we can have a, an object that has a key called message, and then a value of hello world. And then finally, we need to just ex do a default export here. So export default app. So now, if I actually start my development server again, and I go back, this should work. And as you can see, we get an object with message and hello world. Now for us to actually get also autocomplete for our environment variables, what we can do is export a type called env. And this type, let's say we want a database URL because we'll be connecting to a database. And then we can just pass a generic to Hono and just say bindings is of type env. So now what will happen is we actually now have access to c.env. and then database URL, which is very useful. So right now I'm in the Neon console. If you don't have an account, you can sign up for free at neon.tech. And the first thing I need to do is actually create a project. And you can think of a project as a container for the different resources you can provision. So here, I'll give my project a name. I'll call it API. And I'll choose a Postgres version. I'll choose 16, which is the latest version. And optionally, I can name the database that will be created along with my project. By default, it's called NeonDB. And then the last thing I need to do is choose a region for my project. So the location where I'd like to deploy the different resources that I can provision. So here you should actually choose a region that is closest to where you deployed your app. So if you're deploying your app in the Europe region, then you should use the Europe region for your database as well. So right now I'll just go ahead and create project. And as you can see, we have a connection string.
Now to actually use this connection string in my Cloudflare Workers project, all I need to do is just copy it. And in my project, I'll create a .dev .vars file. And this file is the equivalent of a .env file. Uh, the difference is this file is required for Cloudflare workers to actually be able to import our environment variables when working locally. And I'll just say database URL equals, and then I'll paste my connection string. So now actually, if I do npm run dev, you'll see that your worker has access to the following bindings, vars, database URL, and it is hidden, which is awesome. To add Drizzle to our project, we're going to install a few dependencies. So I'll run npm install drizzle ORM, and this is the actual package that we'll use to write our queries using TypeScript, as well as define our database schema. Now, Drizzle actually doesn't ship with its own database client. Instead, it has adapters for different Postgres clients. And one of them is the Neon Serverless Driver, which is a Postgres driver that allows you to connect to your database from serverless and edge environments like Cloudflare workers. So that's what we'll use for our project. So I'll just do neon, at neon database slash serverless and we'll install. Now we're also going to install other packages, but these packages will be development dependencies. So we'll first install Drizzle Kit, which is Drizzle's schema migrations toolkit. And it's what we'll use to actually generate from our TypeScript schema definition, the actual SQL migrations that we'll then apply to our database. And we're also, so first let's add Drizzle Kit as a development dependency, but we're also going to add .env so that we're able to import the database URL from the .dev.vars file, as well as TSX. And we'll use TSX to actually just run uh, TypeScript files with zero config. So we'll be able to just call TSX to execute different scripts. So I'll install these packages. And now that's done, I'll actually go to my package.json to add a few scripts. The first script I'll add is one that generates the SQL migrations from our TypeScript schema, which we'll define in a bit. And I'll call it DB generate. And this script will actually call Drizzle Kit to generate my database migration. So we just need to do generate PG. And then we need to specify the location of our TypeScript schema. So we can just say dash dash schema equals, and then I'll do dot slash source slash db slash schema dot ts. And for the other script that we need to add is one that actually applies the generative migrations. So to do that, we'll have a db migrate script that will simply use tsx to run a file that is located in the db folder that we'll call migrate.ts. So now let's actually define our schema using TypeScript. So in my source directory, I'll add a new directory and call it db. And inside it, I'll define a file called schema.ts. So now I'll add my database schema. And right now we only just have a single table called products. And we're defining this table by using the pg table function that is provided by Drizzle. And this function takes the table name as well as an object that defines the different columns that this table should have. So in this case, we're saying I want a table called products and this table will have an ID and the name in the actual database will be called ID as well. And the type of this ID is serial, so an auto incrementing integer, and this will be the primary key for the table. We also have a name column of type text and what we call name, we have description, that is of type text as well, and then a price, which is a double. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now let's actually try to generate the database migrations. And to do that, all I need to do is run npm run db generate. And as you can see, it worked. We can see that we have a single table called products and it has four columns, no indexes, no foreign keys. And you can see the location of our SQL migration file, we have a new folder called Drizzle. And inside it, we have our 
migrations. So here we're saying create table if it doesn't exist and it's called products and then we're defining the different columns. So now the next step is actually for us to apply this migration and to do that we're going to define a new file in the db folder here and call it migrate.ts and this script that will be in this file we're going to call it when running the db migrate command. So now I'll paste my code for the script and the way it works is we have a function called main and we're running it whenever we're executing the script. And what we're doing is first we're importing drizzle, but we're importing the version that works with the neon serverless driver. So as you can see, drizzle ORM slash neon HTTP. And then we're importing neon from the neon serverless driver. And we're using, essentially we're first establishing a connection to the database and then we're wrapping the database connection with drizzle and this is actually what will give us you know like the actual query builder so we'll be able to do for example const i don't know like products equals db dot and then you can see here just the different functions that we can use like query insert delete etc now for the main function what we're doing here is first we're calling a function called migrate and this function is for the serverless driver the neon serverless driver so you can see it's imported from drizzle orm slash neon http slash migrator and this function takes a database connection that is wrapped with the drizzle function and then takes an object where we specify the location of our migrations folder so for us here it's called drizzle. However, if we want to change this, well, all we need to do is actually modify the generate command and pass in a dash dash out flag where we specify the location of our migrations. But for, for now, we're just using the defaults for this project. And we're just, you know, uh, the location is the drizzle directory, which is in the root of a project. And yeah, what we do is just simply call this function. If everything worked, we see migration successful. Otherwise, we get an error. Now, if we actually try to run this script, it won't work because first we need to, when importing this database URL from our environment variables, we need to actually import it from the .dev.vars file. So to do that, I'll import config from .env and then will pass an object to the config and then the path here it will be dot dev dot varse. So this should work whenever we run the script and now let's actually try it out. So let's do npm run db migrate. And as you can see the migration was successful. So now if I go back to the neon console, go to the tables page, you'll see that I have a products table. However, there's no data yet. So we can actually add some data using the SQL editor. So I'm going to paste this query here that inserts into the products table. So now if I go back to the tables page again, and I go to the products table, you'll see that we have some data. So now let's actually modify our API endpoint and return this data from the database. So if I go back to my project and go to the index.ts file, we're going to modify this part right here. So similar to the migrate script, first we're going to establish a connection to the database. So what we can do is say con SQL equals neon and we'll import neon from the neon serverless driver and we can pass the database URL which will be loaded from our environment variables. And then we can do cons db equals drizzle and we'll import the version that works with the neon serverless driver and pass our SQL. So now what we can do is say const all products equals await db dot select dot from and then we're going to pass our table and we're importing it from our schema and that's really all we need and this needs to be an async function. So now we can just do return c.js on all products. And if we actually now start our desk server and go to localhost 8787, and as you can see, we get the JSON and this data is coming from our NEON database, which is awesome. 
So to actually deploy our worker to production, we first need to log in using Wrangler, Cloudflare CLI. So I can do that by running mpx Wrangler login. And now I'm redirected to the Cloudflare dashboard where I'll be able to allow Wrangler to access my account's resources. So you can see, allow Wrangler to make changes to your Cloudflare account and it can do pretty much everything. And now I can click allow. And you can see that you have granted authorization to Wrangler. So if I go back, you'll see that we're successfully logged in. So now I can actually just run npm run deploy. And this deploy command, what it runs is Wrangler deploy. So now if I do it, this will take a few seconds so that we actually upload our worker and deploy it. Uh, but after that, we'll get a URL where we can visit our API. So now you can see that the API is published. And if we visit it, you'll see that it actually doesn't work. And that's because we actually haven't set the database URL on our production environment. And we can easily do that by using the Neon integration on Cloudflare. So right now I'm in the Cloudflare dashboard. And as you can see, we have one worker here and it's called API, which we just deployed. So if we go to this worker and we go to integrations, you'll see that we have database integrations and Neon is one of them. So this integration will actually allow Cloudflare to import the connection string of our Neon project. And this way we don't need to manually copy and paste the you know connection string in the worker secrets. So all we need to do is just accept the terms. And right now I'm redirected to my Neon account. And as you can see, it says that it only needs the read project scope. So I can click authorize. And now, you know, my projects are loading and I'm able to select my project. I only have one, it's API and I can click continue. And I can select a branch. So in Neon, by default, when you create a project, you have a branch called main. And Neon allows you to create branches of your data where each branch has the full schema and data. I'll leave a link down below to a bunch of videos that show you know, the many use cases of this capability. But for now, we just want to import the connection string from the main branch. So I'll click continue. And then we need to select a database that resides in this branch. So in this case, it's NeonDB, the NeonDB database. And for the endpoint, this is the endpoint that belongs to you know, the main branch. So because each branch has its own endpoint. And then roles, which role we want, I have it here is called Mahmood plus demo. And then I can click continue. And the final thing, we're configuring the secrets. This will be the name of our secret. And this will be the value. And as you can see, the password here uh, is masked. So we can't see it, which is great. So when we click add integration, you'll see that now it says Neon is now integrated with this worker. And if we actually visit this worker right now, we should be getting data from our database, which is the case. And this is awesome. And that's it. This is how you can build and deploy a fully serverless API using Cloudflare workers, Hono, Neon, and Drizzle ORM. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or reach out in the Neon Discord community. We'd love to hear from you. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.